And make him the tax collector. Now remember, Bruce, you're a Hebrew. And yet he's working for the enemy. In addition to that, Bruce has to have, let's say, 100,000 shekels a month in. And Roman government says, Bruce, whatever you can get above and beyond that is all yours, baby. So he's got Roman soldiers behind him. And so instead of getting 100,000, he gets like 500,000. And he oppresses people, so he is absolutely gouging his own people. You see why they got their own category of sinners? Could you imagine that happening to you? So he's a rich dude, for one thing. Nobody likes him for another thing, except the Roman government. And Jesus comes and says, you follow me. Now, obviously, the teachings that Jesus had been implanted in him, the process of conversion and transformation was already taking place. And I, catch what happens when what Levi does. Oh, let's, let's back up. Let's see what he doesn't do. He doesn't say, Jesus, hold on a second. Let me get together all my money. Let me get together all my stuff. Let me make arrangements for someone to take my... He walks away from it, folks. And don't minimize that. He walked away from it. He got up and he left it all behind. And what a great symbolism of all we should leave behind. When you decide to follow Jesus, don't think you're bringing the pocketbook. Marie, when she was baptized, we baptized her wallet too. We baptized everything. All her worldly possessions and everything in the world, she's leaving behind. And that's what we do when we follow Jesus. You can't be coming toting a trailer and a suitcase full of world stuff. You can't follow that path. You come as you are. That'd make a great song, wasn't it? Wouldn't it? Come as you are. Anybody know that song, Come As You Are? When's the last time we sang that hymn? Oh, Just As I Am? Just As I Am is the title. You want me to sing it for you? <laughs> the people who don't like me say yes, and the people who do say no, or vice versa. I don't know. But anyhow, uh, so, so, so he leaves it all behind. He leaves it all behind. And I'm telling you, if we're going to follow Jesus, we need to leave it all behind. Is there anything that you have not left behind in your walk with Jesus? Have you heard the call? Maybe sometimes we need to get called up again. That, that we forgot the calling that we have. This great noble calling by Jesus Christ. The greatest rabbi in the face of the planet that ever existed, ever will exist. He called you. He called me. He called us to leave it all behind. And to follow him. Oh my, oh my. How many people will look at Levi and say, oh Levi... You left all that stuff behind. Oh, that's so sad, Levi. That's a tough thing, isn't it? How many of you will mourn over the things that I need to leave behind? How many of you remember that Michael Card song said, Oh, the, the things we find from the things we leave behind. And oh, why is it so sad? Because we love the stuff. And the more we love the stuff, the more we'll sympathize with this guy and say, Oh, that's so sad. He left behind him. Surely Jesus wouldn't mind if he brought, you know, a few thousand shekels with him, you know. That nice sports camel that he had. His house on Sea of Galilee. Surely he wouldn't mind. No, he left it all behind to follow Jesus. And he calls us the same way today, by the way. Make no mistake about it. There was a guy, somewhere in the Bible, anyhow, uh, and Jesus... He approached Jesus, this guy did. And he said, you know, Jesus, you know, what does it take to get in eternal life? And Jesus said, well, you know, the commandments, and you've got to follow them. And he says, I've been doing this since I was a kid. And, he, and Jesus looked into his heart, and he loved him. He said, well, hey, this is what you need to do. You need to leave all your stuff behind, sell it, give it to the poor, then come follow me. And the man went away sad. Why? Because he had great stuff, great wealth. You see? Can't give up that worldly stuff. A requirement to follow Jesus is the willingness to say, I don't need any of that stuff. Jesus is all I need. Jesus is all I need. Can we say that truly in our life? Jesus is all I need. Let, let, let me just pose it this way. If you had perfect health. If you had all the money you ever needed, 
if you had the career that you absolutely loved, if you had a perfect family, their teeth are all straight, everybody gets along, nobody ever fights, if you had beautiful vacations every year, if you had everything in this world you wanted, but did not have Jesus, do you not consider that a total loss? All of you, Jesus, all of you. What a perfect song we sang here. More of you, Jesus, more of you, more of you. Do we really understand what that means? If we're going to say more of Jesus, and that's what we all agree to as we start on this walk in the Gospel of Mark, more of you, Jesus, more of you. It means walking away from that tax collector's booth. And all those things, all the material goods, and the worldly praise, and all the pleasures of this world, we need to be willing to just turn our back on and just embrace Jesus. Just Him, just Him, just Him. Can we do it? How can we do it more? I, that's my prayer. That's my goal for this series of lessons. It's all about you, Jesus. More of you, Jesus. And he walked away from it all. And it's, to me, amazing that this guy who had all the practice and all the experience in accounting, he wasn't the money keeper, was he? Who was it that wanted to be the money keeper? Judas, the thief. Because he still loved his stuff, his goods, his money. Now, okay, now I'm getting to the grand crescendo here because Levi got the call. He walked away from it all. And then what do we see? The first thing they do, Levi says, party in my house. Come on, all the rest of you tax collectors and sinners because that's the only people he's going to hang out with because all the rest of Jews hate his guts, right? Now he's even in a, a pickle here because the Roman government now doesn't trust him. And now his Hebrew people hate his guts. Well, look what he walked away from. He, now he's like nothing. All he's got is Jesus. And that's sufficient. And he says, it's time to party. And I'm inviting all my friends. And so he invites them all there. And they have a party. Why are they having a party? Because he's with Jesus. That's the foundation for the party. That's the foundation for the best party in the world. You party when you have a promotion. You have a party when you have a birthday. You have a party when you, whatever. But this is the greatest foundation for the singular greatest party in eternity is that I'm now walking with Jesus. And so Levi invites all the people that he knows. And by the way, if you think I'm being irreverent with this idea of God being a partier, then you're mistaken because I'm just going to share with you a couple of Bible passages. Just a few of God's nature of celebration. Go all the way back to the Old Testament. And the children of Israel are in bondage and slavery in Egypt. And Moses comes along with Aaron and they guide the people and they have this special night where, there's a, where God's going to go in and kill the firstborn of all the enemy of Israel. But he passes over the house of his people. They don't have the death of the firstborn, right? He passes over. Death passes over them. And what does God inaugurate in that occasion? It's called the Passover celebration. Thank you, Sammy. Passover celebration. It is a party to be celebrated every single year in remembrance of where God has delivered his people. What did we do here today around this table? We ate some funny little crackers and drank some Welch's grape juice. And we sang songs. If that's all you saw, then you missed it completely. This is a party. This is a celebration. We are celebrating this Lord's Supper. The fact that our Passover lamb, that he died, and that the blood that the Israelites put over the, 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 the post in, the, in their home was applied to us, and now we are free. We're free. Free from sin. From, from, free from all the effects of sin. We are now free. And we're to party. And I hope that'll give you a whole new illustration on when we take this communion, do it with a smile on your face. And, and you think about David. I love King David. He's bringing the ark of, of God, the presence of God, the, the, the ark of the covenant into Jerusalem. And, and he's partying with all his might. And we sing a song, undignified. I'll become even more undignified than this. Why? Because I am celebrating God in his presence. And David's dancing around in his BVDs. And his wife from upstairs looks down and says, oh, look at him. He's so undignified. How many do that when we're out here dancing and praising God and we're just letting the Spirit... Oh, look at that person. They're just trying to get some attention. You know, I, there's always going to be your critics. And what happened to that old gal? Michal, David's wife. Yeah, he put her in a closet and she became an old biddy. 